The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. And welcome to Hannity. And tonight is part two of my interview with potential 2012 presidential candidate Donald Trump, who's been making headlines for the controversial rebukes that he has issued President Obama. And that's where we begin tonight. Let's take a look. A lot has been made over the birth certificate issue. Um, and you apparently you have said in, in, in previous uh, interviews that you have a team of investigators in Hawaii now looking into it. It's Correct. got a lot of press. Everyone's Correct. asking you about it. Right. And what have you come up with your investigators? Well, I don't want to say that now, but it's mm -hmm. going to be very interesting. But I don't want to say it now, Sean, but I will say this. I don't love this issue. I'd much rather be talking about how China is ripping us off, how OPEC's right. That's what I'm really good at. I understand it. I can do such a great job. But this issue came up about six weeks ago. And I've heard about it for years, but I never thought too much about it. Mm -hmm. And I assumed he was born in this country. But six weeks ago, I started really looking into it. He's got a certificate of live birth. That's, by the way, despite what certain liberal press says, that's not a birth certificate. It's a big, big step lower. In fact, in some places, you can't get married or get a driver's license with a certificate of live birth, okay? Mm -hmm. So I say to myself, and It only has why? a stamp, no signature. It's got a stamp. It's got a stamp. It's, no, it's got a stamped signature. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have my birth certificate. I think I I'll show mine. it. I think I'm going to bring it down to Boca Raton this weekend. Okay. But I have mine. It's got stamps, it's got three different signatures, it's got everything, everything's official. You have to see this thing. It's like a certificate of live birth is not appropriate. Now, I say to myself, why, a few, just simple questions. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate, number one? You know, they say it's sealed. Well, but for the person, you can release it. If it's a person, you can release it. Sure, it's sealed, it should be sealed, that's great. But the person, you know, I, I actually sent to New York for my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. And they actually got on the phone, they said, Mr. Trump, I'm sorry to do this, sir, you have to give me your social security number, you have to prove it's really you I'm talking to, Papa. Mm -hmm. I went through a whole big thing. Okay, but when they figured out it was actually me, they sent it to me. I had to pay $38, and they sent me my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. They could do the same thing with him. And I say, why did he spend millions of dollars on trying to stay away from this issue? Why doesn't he give his birth certificate? Well, the, the one thing on his side is that they had these announcements in the newspaper Means eight nothing. days after. Eight days later. Yeah. It was eight days. Look, he's got a grandmother in Kenya mm -hmm. who said he was born in Kenya at the hospital. Then there was bedlam in the room. Bedlam. I don't mean like a little, you know, because he was close to becoming president. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people in that room. And he was being, she was be talking to a reporter with a lot of handlers, a lot of Obama handlers. So they have the grandmother, she said, Kenya. Then all of a sudden, 51 seconds later, he asked a question again. And you hear people scream, no, no, Hawaii, Hawaii. Hmm. Okay, give me a break. Now, the other one was eight or nine days later from the reported birthday. But you don't know if it was even the reported. But they could have easily come from Kenya or someplace. It seems Here, the issue could go away in a minute. Just show the certificate. I don't understand. Why doesn't he show? Why did he spend millions of dollars on trying to stay away from the issue? Now, it's one of two things. Either he wasn't born in the country, or he doesn't have a birth certificate. That, or, or there's something on the birth certificate that he doesn't want people to What do you think that could be? I don't know. I mean, maybe, it says, maybe it says he's Muslim, which wouldn't bother me. I mean, if, it, if it's that... Thing, you know, if, it, if that's it, it's it. It's what it is. Well, he went to a Muslim school in think, Indonesia. He hey, talks about studying the Quran. He hey, talks about one of the most beautiful moments being, you know, prayer time at sunset. Look, he was born Barry Sotero. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, he changed his name. I heard he had terrible marks, and he ends up in Harvard. He wrote a book that was better than Ernest Hemingway, but his second book was written by an average person. You, you suspect, shouldn't have written the second You suspect book. Bill Ayers wrote I'd say Bill Ayers wrote the book. Why do you think it's Bill Ayers? Book. Because everyone says he's a super genius and he was a great writer. And Bill Ayers just came out recently because he's not in love with Obama because like Obama dropped Reverend Wright mm -hmm. like a dog. He mm -hmm. dropped him like a dog. Mm -hmm. You know, for 20 years he's in Reverend Wright's Church. congregation. Okay? I'm Protestant and I understand. He's in Reverend Wright's congregation for 20 years listening to Reverend Wright spew hate against white people. And all of a sudden, he drops him like a dog. And Reverend Wright doesn't, hates him now, actually hates him from what I hear. Well, he said, but the same thing further. with Bill Ayers, the same thing with Bill Ayers. He dropped, he was best friends with Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers was a super genius. 
And a lot of people have said he wrote the book. Well, recently, as you know, last week, Bill Ayers came out and said he did write the book. Barack Obama wouldn't be president. And you know, I wrote many bestsellers mm -hmm. and also number one bestsellers, including The Art of the Deal. I know something about writing. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, the guy that wrote the first book didn't write the second book. Obama made a big mistake when he wrote the second book because the second book was not Ernest Hemingway. It was about 37 classes below. Mm -hmm. So the first book is Ernest Hemingway Plus. The second book was written by somebody that was much more average. How do you have average marks? How do you have bad marks and get into Harvard? Let me go back to the issue because in, I want to talk about media coverage of Obama because you're going to have uh, full coverage of your, your finances, every woman that you've dated, uh, your marriages, all that's going to come up. Fair game? Well, I think it's fair, but I, I do also think this. My finances are great. Mm -hmm. I think when you get into social things, I just think this country has big problems. And I sit down and I look at the problems of this country and I just think that we have more important things to discuss with like... Than who you dated. Yeah, than who I dated or who... And, and you know what? I have unbelievable great relationships with a lot of people and I have a great relationship with my wife. But, but we really... That's the problem with this process. In China, they pick the meanest, toughest, smartest guy. And ruthless and he's our negotiator mm -hmm. in this country we pick a guy that's never had a problem never Most done present. anything I mean look at Obama Obama had bad marks and he gets into Harvard okay he wasn't a good student you know everyone thinks he was like the super genius he wasn't a genius he was he had bad marks and it's a big story everyone says how did he get into Harvard how did he get into Columbia he had horrible marks supposedly why are they hiding of he doesn't some of his release records his and his thesis he doesn't release his marks Nobody knows what his marks, but everybody said, because there was some list where his marks were lousy, and yet he gets into Harvard. I mean, this guy really is leading a charmed life. I have to be honest with you. Somebody said, what's his biggest asset? He is lucky politically. He really is. Well, he He's led a charmed the life. I mean, the media, this is... Well, the, the media is letting him get away with it. Right. I'll give you an example, a better example. Tony Resco. If you did Tony Resco, you'd be in jail right now. I believe it. Tony Resco is his pretty much mentor, was his big political contributor. There was another guy he dropped like a hot rock. So you got Reverend Wright, you got Bill Ayers, you got Tony Resco. He drops these guys and the press leaves him alone. Mm -hmm. He took, he buys a house, and then Tony Resco, his biggest political supporter who's in jail and a you know, mobster, buys the lot next to it. Now I'm a great real estate guy. I made a lot of money. You'll see maybe, assuming I run, okay? <laughs> We you're going to see. You're going to love it. You'll be very impressed with my numbers. I'm a really good real estate guy. But he buys the house next door, the lot next door. Mm -hmm. Obama wants to expand his house. So Resco sells him a little chunk of that lot at, from what I can see, under market value. Under market Rendering value. his lot unbuildable. Rendering Resco's lot either unbuildable or nobody wants it. Nobody wants to have a... Hey, Mrs. Schwartz goes up to buy the house next door and she says, well, what happened to the back of it? I mean, where's the back of my lot? I don't want to buy this lot. So Resco gives him a piece under market and more importantly, destroys the value of the lot he has. Now, when I heard that, I said, oh, that's the end of his campaign. He's out. Because if it was you, me, or anybody else. So here's a guy did one deal in his entire life and it was Tony Resco. That's the only deal he's ever done. It's pretty amazing how nothing happened. And it's pretty amazing how Resco is in jail now and he never ratted out Obama. And coming up, well, and welcome back to Hannity on this Friday night. We continue now with the final installment of my interview with the one and only Donald Trump. Let's take a look. I spent more time than anybody in the media on the issue of, of Reverend Wright and, and Bill Ayers. He was asked one question about Bill Ayers. Oh, he's a guy in the neighborhood. And then we discovered he started his political career in Bill Ayers' house. Uh, he gave speeches with him. He sat on boards with him. Okay. So and he, he acted like well, he hardly knew him. Hardly knew him. Because, and his answer was, he's some guy in the neighborhood. Yeah, some guy. Some guy. Some right. guy that wrote his this book. This is a guy that's unrepentant about bombing the Pentagon, the Capitol, and New York City Police Headquarters. Horrible. And on 9-11, of all days, he had that in the New York Times. Media ignores it. Reverend Wright. I was fortified by him. He drove around listening to tapes of him. Uh, he is, you know, uh, like family to me. And then, of course, he got thrown under the bus. There's a picture in that church magazine. Both of these guys yeah. hate Obama. 
because now. he dropped them. And you know what? There's one thing. I'm like a loyalist. I have people that, you know, I'm, I try to be loyal to people. He's a very disloyal guy because he could have stuck by Reverend Wright and he could have gotten away with it. How does he stick by a guy form. that says GD America? You know what? He could have said, G, I like the guy. He differs from me. So he could have done something. He dropped him like a rock. And Reverend Wright supposedly is just incensed right now. Okay, mm -hmm. incensed. Who cares? Uh, Bill Ayers, bad guy, but a brilliant guy. I'd love to find out who wrote that book. Because you know what? Without that book, he's not president. You know, that book was so brilliant. What does it tell you about... That he became president because the book was so great. Everyone said, oh, look at this guy. Look at the book. If Donald Trump was hanging out with mobsters and doing business deals with mobsters, real estate deals, wouldn't that, though, your associates matter in terms of people's perception of you before you become the president of the United States? Well, the Tony Resco thing is the thing I least understand. Because mm -hmm. if you did the deal, if I did the deal, if anybody did that deal, we'd at a minimum not be in office and probably be behind bars. If, you're, if you and your wife were on a, or your wife was on a magazine cover with Mrs. Farrakhan, who I think is a, a vicious, virulent, anti-Semite and racist, which Michelle Obama was on a cover with Mrs. Farrakhan, he lives two blocks away from Obama, he's within the radical community in, in Chicago, uh, is that a legitimate question? Did you ever meet him? Do you know him? And yeah. would that have an impact, do you think, on the American people in terms of him? Well, I think it would, but I just don't think the press, you cover it, a couple of people cover it. But I, most know, of I don't them have don't. access. He won't come on this show. Well, most of them so. don't cover it. Most of them don't cover it, and it amazes me. It amazes me the free ride he gets. As an example, when I talk about the Bertha issue, and it's, it's not my favorite issue, believe me, mm -hmm. But when I talk about it, I have some reporters, you could see they're visibly angry at me for even bringing it up. Mm -hmm. But there's a real question. You know, I told you before, when I first started, I assumed he was born here, when, the first, when it was first dead. Now, I have a real doubt. So they should have a real doubt, too. They protect him. They're protecting Obama. Tony Resco, I mean, why aren't they out there looking into that matter? I did. We spent a... <laughs> We got a lot of heat during the election process because we brought well, up all of these questions. They never gave Resco a mm -hmm. chance to rat him out. And yet mm -hmm. anybody else, they let him rat out. They would have had Wood Woodward and Bernstein, you know, over uh, there every just, day. And you know the funny thing, if I'm a reporter, hey, look, if I want to report, I want to be Bob Woodward. Yeah. Okay, I want to be Bob Woodward. Mm -hmm. They could be Bob, you could have Bob Woodward if they found out about the birth certificate, if they found out about Tony Resco. They could be Bob Woodward. Look, I said in the last election, journalism died in America. They will be much tougher on you. Their scrutiny will be much yeah, tougher of any candidate. And every Republican time they're tough candidate. with me, I'm going to bring up investigator Resco. Is, is, By the way, is this the difference, time, though? I mean, do you, you Sean, take every it on time these they're issues. Tough, Sean, let me just finish this. Yeah. Because they will be tough. Here's the problem. I've done hundreds of deals. Hundreds. I've done transactions and deals by the hundreds. I've done great. Okay? I mean, I've done, you know, mostly great deals. And they will be tough on me. Here's a guy who did one deal. One deal. But they'll go through every deal. Did the secretary dot that I? Oh, gee, there's a typo. Therefore, Trump did something wrong. It's really terrible. You know, I've always heard that a very successful person cannot run for political office, okay? And I understand it. But the country's in such bad shape that I feel I have an obligation okay. to do it. And you're willing to open all those books. Yeah, yeah I open my books. Open hey, look, them. I'm going to do a financial disclosure. Yeah. Assuming I run, I'm going to do a financial disclosure. And by the way, the papers submitted to me are not big enough. All right. Donald Trump, it's been great. Good to see you. Really appreciate you. And time. I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. And coming up, act. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.